welcome to everybody on uh, behalf of the entire academic community of University of Tor Vergata and of the rector Giuseppe Novelli. I want, first of all, give you a very warm welcome in Rome and here in our campus. Buongiorno a tutti, sono lieto di dare il benvenuto per questa cerimonia molto importante. Sostituisco indegnamente il rettore Giuseppe Novelli che purtroppo non ha potuto intervenire perché in questo momento è a Villa Mondragone dove sta ricevendo il ministro dell'economia e delle finanze, il professor Tria che come voi sapete è un nostro professore e quindi non avendo ancora, pur avendo molte qualità, il dono dell'ubiquità ha delegato purtroppo per voi me. È una grande occasione per l'università e per la facoltà di medicina, dobbiamo essere grati al dottorato e al dipartimento che è rappresentato dal professor Melino. La nostra è una cerimonia semplice, eh, darò la parola al professor Melino e poi al professor Nicotera, sentiremo poi la prolusione della candidata e infine ci sarà il momento formale della proclamazione per il titolo. Professor Melino. Grazie. Sì. Grazie a tutti, eh, forse potete sedere. Volevo ringraziare eh, eh, Fra Chaman per accettare questo invito, volevo ringraziare tutti voi per essere presenti eh, in questa assise eh, oggi. E fatti saluti in italiano, uh, I can switch in English, so, uh, so it's better for our guests. So uh, I am really proud and honored basically to uh, be allowed by, by the rector and the, and, the, and the deputy rector to give this uh, honorary degree to uh, Frau Chavan. Uh, and uh, I think there will be uh, a presentation by uh, Professor Nicotera, who is a member of the college of our uh, doctorate. Um, very briefly, uh, the, the reason for uh, having this uh, degree uh, is, is, uh, is for the work that uh, Frau Chavan has organized uh, during her ministry between 2005-2013 in Germany, and where she has uh, created a new uh, dimension for uh, how to organize uh, biomedical research. There's been many other achievements that Frau Chavan has done, like uh, fostering the, the career for women, just to mention another one, but uh, I think the organization of biomedical research is uh, central, not only in Germany, but in all Europe and, and in Italy. And for this reason, we are proud that uh, Frau Schaman, she will give a lecture exactly on, the, on, on this area. And today in the afternoon, we will have also a workshop with a, a lot of uh, uh, illustrious guests, which came from the US and from Germany, from, uh, uh, also from England, uh, to actually uh, present and discuss this event. So uh, the uh, rationale from looking from a simple side is, uh, uh, is very uh, simple. At the political level, there's been identification of certain diseases that have a, a social uh, Im importance and influence, like cancer, like neurodegeneration, like uh, infectious diseases, and so on. And around this, there's been a creation of, uh, of a special uh, national institute and those are linked in Germany between the university and the um, other foundation, like the Humboldt uh, Foundation, Gesellschaft. And, uh, and, and there, the quality and bringing together top scientists to actually address in a uh, homogenized and, and, uh, and, uh, and simultaneous manner uh, the best sciences to actually try and achieve the understanding, the knowledge, and also possibly the therapy uh, so, uh, which will bring a social uh, uh, benefit is central. This model has not been applied only in Germany, but for example, recently in England, there's been the Dementia Research Institute, which has been basically developed similar to the ZNA, 
and, uh, uh, and probably now is the moment in which uh, this discussion should be presented not only in Germany, in England, in Italy, but we are part of European community, and therefore we all share these important uh, problems, and therefore we felt that this is uh, exactly what is, uh, uh, has to be remarked and discussed today. So how biomedical research should benefit for the society. So we thank uh, Annette for accepting this uh, degree. Uh, I would like to uh, pass the, the microphone to uh, Professor Nicotera because he has witnessed this, uh, 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 how effective this model is. And probably by talking on his experience on the ZNE uh, as an Italian uh, coming from England and Sweden, uh, and now landed into Germany, how basically the European uh, 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 interaction could actually bring uh, uh, and foster improvement for the society and for the humanity. So thank you, Pierluigi, for coming here. Uh, innanzitutto, eh, eccellenze ambasciatrici, professor Franchini, professor Merino, membri della Commissione, e eh, eh, tutti coloro che sono qui con noi oggi, vorrei portarvi anche da parte mia il saluto per questo evento eh, particolare che come ha detto il professor Melino è sicuramente ha un'importanza che va al di là uh, del, del dottorato stesso ma del, uh, degli impatti profondi sul modo in cui noi vediamo la scienza. So dear excellencies, members of the committee, professor Franchini, professor Melino, uh, I'm delighted to be here to, today with you to celebrate uh, and to confer the honorary doctor degree to Annette Chavan. Uh, progress of our countries is uh, linked to science, is linked to the possibility of developing new concept. And uh, if you, we look at the uh, tremendous progress that has taken place following the Second World War until now throughout the world, and the way we live in this society, it is actually remarkable that science has driven some of the major achievements on mankind. We live longer, uh, which is a positive and, and perhaps somehow a negative thing, because of course we get diseases that before we didn't get. On the other hand, the quality of life has increased dramatically. And this has created progress for all our countries, has created wealth, has created the economic development. So a society which is driven by science is a society which looks into the future. A society which is driven by beliefs is a society which looks into the past. And I think we are facing a major dilemma between beliefs and science these days. And the problem is that the, uh, it seems that the upper hand is going towards belief and not towards science, which is a paradox. And as I reminded when this Adeni was inaugurated by Frau Merkel uh, in March, uh, the, the dilemma of this society, it is well, what do we choose? Do we choose to be able to go towards belief or do we choose to be guided by science? Science does not have the truth, but science has the method to search for the truth, which is validation and is not invented facts or invented truths. So this has been uh, the um, driving force of our society. And I'm very happy to say that uh, the impulse that Annette Chavan gave to this was without precedent in my experience throughout different countries in Europe. Her vision has created a new way by which we can do research to solve major diseases. The idea to bring together in a country the best brains from existing organizations, the universities, which have been the driving force of research throughout centuries, and non-university organizations, younger, but still very strong and very powerful in terms of um, research which is strategically orientated, has created the Deutsche Center for Gesundheit Forschung, so the German Center for Health Research. The combination of the two has been a tremendous success if you think that within a few years, these centers have become at the forefront in research worldwide. As Professor Melino reminded us, other countries now are copying these model systems. We have uh, the first center was the German Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases. The UK is creating something exactly on the same model as the German Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases. In fact, I was privy to see the documents that the UK government had prepared before the creation of this, and this identity was clearly listed in that as a model to follow. And the same thing has been happening in Canada, has been happening in Australia, and uh, with the creation of the network for neurodegenerative diseases here in Italy between the major 
uh, research hospitals in Italy is actually becoming a reality also here. So sh let's look in a positive way to the future. Let's look in terms of science. Let's try to be able to create a model that brings together European countries to be at the forefront by bringing together the very best brains, exactly as Annette Chavan had seen in her uh, period as Minister of uh, uh, Science and Education in Germany. I think the future, if we want to overcome the difficulties uh, of the present, if we want to overcome beliefs and populisms, uh, I think the future it is to be able to deliver a new concept for people based on realities that are created by our progress and by our science. So I'm particularly honored and happy that today we are discussing this, that we are uh, taking the opportunity to hear Annette Chavan directly presenting her vision and at the same time to honor her with uh, an honorary doctor at the University of Rome. Thank you, Professor Nicotera. With this, I'd like to invite uh, uh, Frau Chavan to the podium and give her a presentation of her uh, view on uh, biomedical research in Europe. Professor Francini, the Vice Rector of this University, distinguished members of the faculty, dear students, dear friends, Ambassador Susanne wasem reiner ladies and gentlemen, first of all, many thanks. I feel honored and in friendship with the health research community in Italy and Germany. And um, I think it's a very good idea to discuss, especially in these days, what we mean when we talk about Europe, Europe 2030, Europe 2040. What do we want? Which perspectives are there? And what is the role of science and research, especially in Europe today. Europe, ladies and gentlemen, is struggling with itself. Once again, national interests are being given priority over the European common good. The founding of the European Union 61 years ago, which represented a great peacemaking enterprise, risks sinking into oblivion. When the treaties of Rome were signed at that time, they were linked to the belief that the great challenges ahead should be overcome together in the future. This was a wise and far-sighted decision. At that time, Konrad Adenauer said that the treaties were beneficial for every member state for Europe and for the world. Thanks to this decision, Europe gained in attractiveness over the following decades. This should be remembered today when the priority of national interests is being promoted by means of populism and means of slogans. Slogans do not replace politics. They offer neither prospects for a European future nor solutions to problems in the member states of the European Union. Slogans unsettle, create exclusion, and lure into national isolation. The European tradition has also been shaped by the success story of its science and its universities. The idea behind European universities is education through science. This is recognized worldwide and, for example, has also found its way into leading American universities. It corresponds to the conviction of European people that human beings 
with their talents holds a special position. The Berlin Declaration on the 50th anniversary of the Treaties of Rome states that Europe's wealth lies in the knowledge and ability of its people. That is the key of growth, employment, and social cohesion. Science is part of European culture, and science has always been European and internationally oriented. This is proven by several international university partnerships and international research projects and by the European Research Council and the research framework programs in Europe, most recently Horizon 2020. The international nature of science and research offers great opportunities, especially now. And this is incompatible with any regression to primarily national interests. In science policy, science is regarded as a diplomacy of trust. An outstanding example of this is the relationship between Israel and Germany. Long before the first journey of a political delegation from Germany to Israel took place, a group of the Max Planck Society traveled there. When political contacts were not yet possible, science was able to establish initial connection between the two countries and paved the way for the later establishment of diplomatic relations. Scientific relations between Israel and Germany have continued to remain excellent to the day. Ladies and gentlemen, science as diplomacy of trust is although a good guiding principle for Europe today. If we look at the development of science and research centers in Europe in recent years, we will see both light and shadows. The Lisbon strategy adopted at a special summit of the European heads of state and government in Lisbon in, 20, in 2000 aimed to make the European Union the most competitive and dynamic knowledge-based economic area in the world within 10 years. 10 years. This would be 2010. And now we are in 18. The program which followed is known as Europe 2020. Innovation is described in both programs as the engine of economic growth in Europe. Another goal was the invest 3% of gross domestic product in research and development. The decision were persuasive. The implementation was difficult until today. <coughs> to date, investments in research and development are well below the 3% target. I think now we are 2% or 2.1%. The European Research Council was founded in 2007 under the German presidency. It established financially attractive and common research funding and promotion at European level. And Horizon 2020, the largest EU research and innovation program in the history of the European Union. It includes nearly 80 billion euro of public investments for the years 2014 to 2020. And this should also help attract further investments from forward-looking companies. In this way, the Euro European Union defines itself as a union of innovation. And now, especially in these days, we have to talk about the union of innovation, and not only of tradition. The union of future, and not only of the past.
A further aspect of the, is the participation of European countries in major international research projects such as the European Molecular Biology Laboratory, Laboratory the EMBL, the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility, and the European Organization for Astronomical Research in the Southern Hemisphere. All the worth mentioning is the European X-ray Laser XFEL, which was inaugurated in 2016 in Hamburg. Great projects, projects, projects which are only possible with international, European and international cooperation. Although the 3% target has not yet been achieved, the above-mentioned initiatives have led to a significant increase in financial investment in research and development. Above all, these decisions in the field of research policy have made clear how much innovation is a key to future prosperity in Europe. Today, education, science and research are indisputably recognized internationally as the key to good future prospects for our societies in the 21st century. There's a great consensus in theory. Europe must face strong competitors in, the regard, in this regard. This is a true with regard to the USA today as it has always been and it is now also true for countries like South Korea and China. This is another reason why the 3% target must be upheld. Some current debates, for example, those about European contributions to NATO neglect this important target. Science must highlight its importance vigorously. Special attention within future initiatives should be paid to the situation of young scientists. The current situation in many countries of the European Union is unsuitable for promoting young talents in a sustainable way. A new research framework program of the European Union starting from, this, from the year 2021 must focus on this aspect. This is a key for future. This is a key for union of innovation in Europe in future. Finally, there is a need for new ideas in order to truly enable all the member states of the European Union to participate in European research framework programs, because this is the second pro uh, problem now, actually. One of the downsides of the current situation is that more and more countries do not have their own resources at their disposal to size the opportunities offered by the European program. My previous remarks have described the context of research policy for our topic, which is the reorganization of biomedical research. What we are speaking about here are facilities, financial investments, and new European cooperation possibilities in the field of health research. The special public responsibility in research policy does not only concern financial investments. This is an important question. This is the one key, but sometimes you need two keys. And the other one is concern suitable facilities for promoting research. I shall illustrate this in the following part. I will take as an example the funding of the German center, the DZNE, which was inaugurated in 2009 in Bonn. The start starting point for the founding of this center was, as Professor Nicotera uh, told us, the demographic developments in Germany, which were comparable, 
comparable to those in all other European countries. It tells on one side a success story in the field of medicine. We live considerably longer than previous generations and we speak about societies of long life. In these societies, however, illness and multiple, multiple medical histories occur more frequently, especially in connection with age. In particular, these include new neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson. Forecasts in Germany indicate that in the light of demographic change, up to 4 million people will be affected by dementia by 2050 if we fail to make any significant progress in prevention and therapy. This is the reason why the federal government in Germany has decided to establish its own research center for neurodegenerative diseases. This has given us a new and unique facility to better exploit the potential of our research resources. The center consists of several efficient facilities which are jointly financed by the central state on one side and the federal lender in Germany. As you know, we have a little bit difficult as, uh, structure in Germany and we need in all the for all the great facilities, cooperation between lender and the central state. The foundation of the center was possible because the research of neurodegenerative diseases in Germany is carried out at high level and has an excellent reputation worldwide. The founding of the German Health Research Center is linked to the following three aspects. First, we bring together the research nationwide, across disciplines, and as international leader, leaders. The DZNE Center is more than just a place where excellent science comes to life. In the center, research is carried out by joining forces and on the basis of a common strategy. This enables us to increase the efficiency of dementia research dramatically. Second, the DZNE Center covers the entire spectrum of patient-oriented research. We need to know more about aging processes and the causes of age related diseases. We need new approaches in therapy and prevention, and since there are as yet now satisfactory treatment options, we also need more research into care and the care of dementia patients. And third, the DZNE represents a type of research that puts a, the human being at the center and focuses on the benefit of patients. To do this, we need to shorten the path from research to clinic, thus promoting trans transmission. That is why the DZNE also has the task of bringing knowledge from research to the patient bedsides and thus to patients themselves more rapidly. What is needed is close cooperation, really close cooperation between non-university and university research, including university hospitals, for the mutual benefit of both. So maybe, and I hope it should be, the next step to create a national hospital in Germany. This focus on transmission is unique, and since a single facility cannot handle all this alone, forces are joined nationwide. What we therefore need are long-term targeted research centers. Here I have addressed one central task of an effective research policy, the creation of facilities 
in which the best scientists from various spe specialist fields can work together in an it in intelligent network, regardless of which research organization, university or federal state in Germany they work in. The existing resources should be employed in the best possible way. International Research Center with satellite facilities provides an excellent framework in this regard. Ladies and gentlemen, the federal government partners in the establishment of the German Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases in the Helmholtz Association. The founding of the DZNE nine years ago was linked to the intention of permanently bundling and strengthening the existing capacities in health research, although in view of other common diseases. In the intervening, intervening years, the research centers on common diseases have been strategically developed and more German centers of health research have been established. These include the German Cancer Cent Research Center, the German Center for Diabetes Research, and the German Center for Cardiovascular Diseases, as well as the German Center for Infectious Diseases. The coalition agreement of the new federal government provides for the founding of another German health research center. These centers are the flagship, flagship of internationally visible, competitive, competitive top-level research. Ladies and gentlemen, nine, nine years ago, the breakthrough in health research was anything but a matter of course. Despite, or perhaps, because of the financial and economic crisis, the then federal government were consciously decided to significantly increase investment in research and development. In a single legislative period, the budget of the Federal Ministry of Education and Research in Germany was increased by 35%. Because we believed, we were deeply convinced, that especially in difficult times, Germany as a research country should be sustainably strengthened. For the establishment of the German Center, the D said in E, we were able to engage Professor Nikotera, an internationally renowned researcher and scientific director. He made the creation of the center a great success story and I would like to thank him here for that once more. That was a, a good decision. And I think this nine years were only success story for you. The success of his work was significantly contributed to the creation of further centers in Germany by the federal government and the federal states. Yes, to, in, to invest financial investment in difficult times. There were difficult times nine years ago and there are difficult times today. But if you will wait, after there will come a time without difficulties, you can wait, wait after the day, uh, after the, or the, the day after the latest court. Therefore, difficult, uh, difficulties are not a reason not to invest in science and research. And this should be not only uh, important in one or another country, but in the European Union. Why we are speaking about the developments in Germany here in Rome today? Our experiences in Germany encourage us to think about similar facilities in Europe. We have already said that the demographic trends in European countries are comparable. The same is true for their consequences, 
for patients and their families as well as for the developments in health systems, especially in economic terms. Science and research need consistent and long-term financial investments. Even though we are all speaking about many other issues in Europe, this must not be forgotten. Progress in dementia research, cancer research, cardiovascular diseases and multiple medical conditions which are dealt with by geriatric medici medicine is also associated with progress in health care systems. Investing in research leads in a long term to positive consequences for the people concerned with regard to diagnostic options and therapies. Prevention and early detection have positive effects on the health system. So, if we are thinking about the next European research framework program, then this is the right time to think about European health research centers. If I am properly informed, the preparation of the new European Research Framework Programme includes the introduction of a section called Medicine in Curriculum. The EU Commission has planned 7.7 billion for health research in the health cluster, and in addition, there are further as yet unquantified sums from, for example, the European Research Council. The program initiatives should focus on dementia. Negotiations are ongoing, so proposals are still possible. To Europe, as to every member state, the principle applies that public responsibility in research policy relates to financial investment on the one hand and initiatives for pooling forces on the other. And thus, it also has a concept conceptual task. European health research centers could therefore represent an interesting European vision. I shall repeat my previous question. Why are we talking about this here in Rome? Italy and Germany can strengthen their cooperation in science and research through a joint initiative to set up European health research centers. They are already working together in the aforementioned large-scale European research projects. There are excellent researchers in both countries, in Italy and Germany, including in the younger generation. There are several cooperation partnerships between universities in Italy and Germany. Many Italian and German researchers work together on European research projects. Science as diplomacy of trust. Now is the right time in Europe to devise a vision of Europe 2030 as a research hub. Now is a time to give a chance to young talents in the field of science. Now, Italy and Germany should take the initiative. European health research centers can become an important part of the European project. So, dear scientists and distinguished faculty, don't wait until the day after the latest, latest court. Now, it's the right moment. Thank you. Thank you, Frau Chavan, for uh, uh, the nice presentation. We could not agree more. <laughs> we really appreciate your uh, your comment. I leave now the presentation to the deputy director. Now it's a time for the formal ceremony. Il collegio del dottorato di ricerca in biochimica e biologia molecolare in data 22 settembre 2017. 
il Consiglio di Dipartimento di Medicina Sperimentale e Chirurgia in data 25 settembre 2017, la Giunta della Facoltà di Medicina e Chirurgia del 26 settembre 2017, il Senato Accademico dell'Università di Tor Vergata nella riunione del 14 dicembre 2017 hanno deliberato di conferire ad Annette Chavan il dottorato honoris causa in biochimica e biologia molecolare con la seguente motivazione per la sua innovativa ristrutturazione e organizzazione della ricerca scientifica nel proprio paese dove riorganizzando centri di ricerca quali il Centro Tedesco per la Ricerca sul Cancro, il Centro sulle Malattie Neurodegenerative e l'Associazione Helmholtz, ha raggiunto importanti risultati scientifici e clinici e creato un modello esemplare di ristrutturazione e organizzazione della ricerca scientifica adottato anche da altre nazioni. So with this, I think we can uh, close the, the, the formal ceremony and uh, we have to thank the Ambassador Frau Annette Chavan, the Ambassador Frau uh, Susanna Wesenbaum, and uh, all the faculty and all the students and all the people who came here today and our foreign guests. Uh, so uh, thank you for this uh, great event. Thank you, everybody.